Welcome to a Wix website video guide. In this video today, you're going to learn the ins and outs of how to edit your Wix Studio site and how you can edit buttons to colors to text. But this is all about the visuals and editing your site to make it your own, whether it's you're using one of the templates that you've purchased off my website or it's a, tem or it's a template or an existing site that you currently have. So I'm using the Aurora template to use as the example for this site. Um, what you're going to do is when you log into your Wix back office, it's going to look like this. You're just going to click here where it says edit site. Now when you click edit site, it's going to open up a new tab to the actual editing section of the platform. This is where you'll be able to get to grips with absolutely everything and edit absolutely everything that needs to be edited throughout the website. So we're just going to wait for that to load. Once that loads, you'll be taken straight away to your home screen. Your home screen, of course, will be the layout, whether it's the chosen template that you've purchased or it's just your layout of your website that you've designed yourself or another designer has done. So as you can see, when I hover over everything, everything is highlighted. So these are all sections that can be edited and changed. If you are using, of course, one of the templates that you have purchased through my site or through my Etsy, um, these are a great video for you because I can show you how certain sections are done. Um, what I recommend with any templates that have been purchased um, from myself is do not um, move things around, um, just edit the text unless you are advanced in doing this, just because it will change the layout completely in a tablet and a mobile view. So as you can see, I can click on sections and a toolbar pops up on the right hand side. When you click on a certain text, so whether it's the headers, the subheaders or the paragraphs, this is going to be the exact same. Now, as you can see, you have a breakdown of absolutely everything here. So you have the style, which is set to your font selection, which is here on the left hand side, which we'll go through in a moment. You've got the font, which you can change to anything you would like. You've got the font size, which you can change, and you have a section here which is max to minimum. So this is because of the responsive behavior that I've set it to. So this is just from max to minimum. I keep the same. So every time you basically stretch or shrink on a computer view, it will keep it to that size text so it doesn't get too small and it doesn't get too big. So I recommend if you have purchased a template um, to keep it to whatever the font size you choose up here, put it as the max and the minimum as well. The spacing, you can choose the line spacing in between the lines in the paragraph and also the distance between the characters. You can change the color of the text and you can also use a blend mode so you can blend the text as well, which I don't recommend doing unless you are advanced in Wix Studio. You have the styles, bold, italic, underline, um, strike through, and you of course have highlight. The alignment, you can change the alignment to however you would like, and you can add bullet points, um, editing with numbers, and obviously the indents too. And you can also capitalize. So there's a lot of things you can do across editing the text of the website and this goes for all pages the exact same way that we're doing it now position type you don't really need to change like i said unless you know what you're doing with wix studio the same with docking and margins and paddings you don't need to click on adjust or anchor the main properties that you need especially if you're using one of the templates or that you're not that advanced with wix studio is to stick to these sections here as everything else has been laid out to exactly how it needs to be now, every time you do edit anything, you always need to make sure to click the publish button. Whenever you click this publish button, it is going to come up with this and it is going to save the template to however you have designed it and edited it. So you just need to click done and then that will be updated. Now, buttons are a little bit more different. So when you click on one of the buttons, for example, it's going to still come up on the toolbar, but we're going to come up with the button state here. So you can see regular. So this means just how it looks currently. But then when you click hover, this is what it looks like when you hover. So once somebody hovers over the button, it's going to change color. But you can also just edit it in the regular state first. So with the regular state, you can choose to change the background color. So you just click. You can choose to change it to any color you would like. If the color isn't there to your selection, 
you can click to do with custom color and drag and put the colors to wherever you need and then click to add them. You can also choose to do a gradient so you can change how the gradient looks by making it a radial, a linear, um, depending on what type of look that you're looking for. And you can even make it an image if you wanted to as well. Once you've done that, you can go to the text section. Again, the text is the exact same way that we edited the text in the website, except the layout is slightly different here. So again, you have the text color here. You can either um, outline the text or you can highlight the text. The character spacing is done through a toolbar and the font size as well. So it's the drag and drop, or you can just click to type it in. So you can click to type it in to make it larger. You can make it smaller and you can change the fonts as well. Line spacing again is done the same. Now, if you wanted to add a border to the button like what I've done, instead of having a color, you can just click on border and then you can click on how thick you want the border and it will thicken it or it will make it um, completely invisible if you click zero. Now, just say you wanted one side of the border to be thicker than the other, you can do, for example, we click on two, you just unlock this and then you can change it to where each side is different to the other. So we can click that so we can have the bottom bit as thicker and then the top bit as thinner. But I like to keep mine, of course, all one size. So we're going to put that back to two. corners you can round the corners off I don't believe this is changing I think my computer is just there we go my computer is a little bit frozen but there we go it is now working so we're going to change that back to two there we go and corners so you, my corners are rounded on this part but if you didn't want rounded corners you can just click zero and it's now become a square you can see the example here just say you wanted to make it really rounded you can change it to whatever radius you want and again you click the unlock button if you wanted one side more curved than the other shadows you can add a shadow to your button um, again wouldn't advise to play around with this unless you know what you're doing with which studio layout I wouldn't suggest this either unless you know what you're doing and icon you can add an icon to a button so if I click that I can, you can see there's an arrow that's popped up now I can choose the rotation of where I want the arrow to point, but we're going to choose not to have an icon. But you can play around with that with the size, the color, and the rotation, of course. And that is how you edit the buttons across your website. Now, when we scroll down, you can see that every area has a section. So when we click on here, this is one section. When you scroll down, you can see it's not highlighted down here. So that means it's another section. So each section is built and designed for specific reasons. And of course, if you are editing sections, you need to make sure that you are focusing on that section and that you are editing it correctly and taking your time to do so. So for example, if we have a section that has an image like this, we are going to click on that section and then the toolbar on the right hand side is going to load. You're going to see that we have the design section. This is the section you need to go to. So you can see this is the image that is on the website. If I wanted to change this, I can click change media. And I can use either media from the Wix stock images, which are free to use. So if I wanted to use, for example, this image, I can go ahead and use this image. And this is free to use from the Wix market. You can go ahead to choose Shutterstock and Unsplash, but these will need to be purchased. Or you can click upload media and go to your site files and choose media that you've uploaded yourself. Um, so this is how you add your own pictures to the website and edit pictures. You click upload media and then you upload any of your own pictures and select that specific picture by double clicking it. You can choose then a focal point on the image. So what section of the image you want it to focus on. So if I was to put it here, it would move. If I was to put it down here, it would focus on the glass. So when it does the scroll method, it will show that in a better position. Now again, the opacity, if I change the opacity to have the image faded, 
I can change the background of the colour for that so it kind of stands out a little bit more. Um, again, we can fade it even more if we wanted to, or we can just keep it to where it's just a full image. Now, if you've got an image that goes across the site like this, you can choose the fitting options. You can choose scale to fill, tiles, or original size. If it's across the website like it is on this specific template, you always pick scale to fill. You don't want to pick anything else because it just won't work out well. Any of these other sections, you don't really know what to do unless you're an expert in Wix Studio and know what you're doing. I would suggest to leave these sections just because they're not necessary. But another thing I wanted to show you was these selection buttons here. So again, you have the scroll effect added. So the scroll effect is where you can add effects to where when the website scrolls, the image moves or a section of the image is shown. So we have the parallax, which shows the image as it was like sitting on the background. So when the website scrolls, it scrolls and shows the entire image. But it focuses on the focal point that we set in this section here. Now you can change this to whatever you would like. So you can have it fade in, fade out. So there's so many different options that you can do. And then again, you can choose shape divider. So this is why, if you can take a look, we have the shape under the image and then we have that the brush strokes at the top. This is how we go to change those. So you can change the bottom. So we can change it to like a liquid effect. And if you click on top, you can change the top effect to, let's say, clouds. Now, if you click on custom design, you can change the background. So just say your website is a completely different background color to black. So you want to change the backgrounds for these in black so that the website is more seamless when you've changed the colors. And again, you would do the exact same with the bottom. So we're able to go to custom design, we'll go to opacity and color and we choose black. So again, that, that would be how you would change the color. And then if you change the color of this section, you would click this section, click color. And again, we click the back color. And what you'll need to do is make sure that certain sections, when you click on them, as I'm doing now, are filled in. As you can see, this section has the colour not filled in, that is just because we have a shape divider, but we can remove that by going up and clicking none. And then you want to make sure when you click on separate sections like this cell, you go to background and you click on the colour. And again, you can see everything is changing so that the image is more seamless. Again, if you see any images like this, you can just click on them and you click on to change image if it is a separate image and it's not a section image. That is how you go about changing images is that you click on those to edit those and add them to whatever you would like to the picture to be. As we scroll down, again, the text and buttons, we've shown how to edit these. And then if your website, for example, has a section that you click on and it shows that it's a repeater, this means that everything within a repeater that is moved is duplicated onto each repeater. So as you can see, I've made this bigger. I'm overlapping this onto here. Everything is moving and being seamless with each other. So with repeaters, it's like what the name says, it repeats on each section that is next to each other. So with repeaters, you can just click on the repeater itself where it highlights all of it. And the editors and sections are all in the toolbar on the right again. Very similar to how we change the text and how we change the button colours. It's all in the section on the right to play around with. Another thing you can play around with is how it's displayed. So you can display it as a list, as a slider, as wood cells. But again, I would not advise changing this unless you are experienced with Wood Studio. But you can have a play around with it. You can set items per row. And you can set the direction, but I wouldn't suggest changing this. Number of items. So you can change it to have more or less. So I want to just show three. And just say that I've only got three services to show, for example, and I want to get rid of one of them. So I'm going to go and just go up and click to manage my items. So we are going to...
click this sorry, repeater and then you're going to click on this section where it says manage items and then you'll be able to delete one of the items you can also just go on to one of the sections and you can also right click onto sections and you can delete and it will just delete that section for you if you wanted to or you can click on the manage button it will go through all of those now you can see we've changed it to free but you can also change a lot more properties so like the gaps between them we can make them smaller so they're more tighter together and again very simple and very easy to edit if you're using a template again just click on the images click change image to make it into your own website now when you scroll down again you can edit the own page to however you would like if you have an instagram feed on one of your templates for example your website needs to be connected you go and just click on that click settings and then you click to connect your business account or your personal account and once that's done it will display your instagram feed now this is the footer of your website each footer of the website if you have purchased a template has been designed and laid out specifically so if you are changing any of these make sure that it is just a click to change the text or change the image because it's so important not to play around with this otherwise it does affect the other views now we're going to go and see how we can view other pages and edit other pages so you're just going to click here on the top left hand side and this is where all of your pages that are on your website are going to be available for you to edit. So this is your menu for absolutely every page that's on your website, whether it's hidden or shown. So you just click onto that page that you want to edit. Once that appears, that is where you can go into then start editing the site to however you would like. So as you can see, everything you hover over is editable. So again, with the shape, you can click on the shape and you can change the color of the shape to however you would like to change it. And again, once you change it, always make sure to click this publish button and it will save and publish your new settings of what you've edited. Anything that you are changing, it will automatically update on the computer view and the tablet view and the mobile view. Unless you are playing around with things and changing the size or moving things around, um, these won't automatically update on these sections. You will need to do that yourself. So templates that have been created by myself are recommended that you can edit the text the colors the images to whatever you would like but don't play around with the positioning unless you know what you're doing otherwise it can completely mess up the site and how it looks on different views and this can all be edited in different ways and this is um, a perfect example of how we can do that by clicking change image again throughout the whole website this goes for all the other images as well across the website for all the other pages you just go into the rest of the pages of your website again the text can be edited the buttons and most importantly one thing that i did miss about the buttons that is really important and i do apologize that we need to go for it is how are we connecting it to pages so with buttons you're going to click on settings and then you can see here what the text says so we can change the text by of course clicking and typing book now and then this is the important part where it links to so currently we have it booked to the booking system page on this website template that i've created but you can have it connect to absolutely everything whether it's an email a phone number or a specific page on the website so you're just going to click on to what page you want it to go to and it will go straight to that page but just say you have an outsourced booking system and you don't want to use the booking system currently on your site or you're looking to add a booking system link you can just click web address and then just make sure to copy and paste the right address to direct your booking system onto there once you've selected whichever option you decide to do click done and then it will of course amend the changes that you've just made now, with all the parts across the website, everything is editable and you can add new sections and you can add new bits across to your website. Um, that can all be shown in separate videos on my YouTube page. Um, so there will be videos on there of how you add new sections to your website and also how you can remove sections. This is more about how you edit your website when it comes to color and text and images. Again, when it comes to the menu, it is very simple to do you click on your menu and you click manage menu and then you have your menu options here 
you can just click on the small dots here and remove anything out of here that you don't don't longer need. Um, as I mentioned, if you are looking to add new services, um, how we add and duplicate pages will be on another video as well, along with the menu information. But when it comes to sort of colours and text, we are just focusing focusing on the site styles. So again, we can change our main background colour, our action colour. Um, our fonts and the size of our fonts again when you do change these these aren't going to automatically change everything on the site because the site has been designed in a bespoke way for that particular look for the website so you need to go through the website and make these adjustments slowly so that it flows through absolutely in every way if you have any questions please leave a question in the comment section and I will aim to get back to everyone as soon as I can. But if you need more guides on more information on how to edit your Wix Studio site, please check out the videos that I have.